Emergency state two. Emergency state two. Fifteen miles report established. Rebel five is on quest. Do you want uh, Rebel one to four? Uh, one to four. As well. one to four. Uh, RAF Coltishaw is one of Britain's most famous air bases. Born in the dark days of the Battle of Britain, it is about to die. Coltishall has seen 60 years and more of war and peace, and life and death. The first planes to land were Spitfires, the last to leave will be Jaguars. Coltishall in Norfolk has been home to the Jaguar for 32 years. I've had the privilege of flying in the back seat of one of these amazing aircraft. But that chance may not come again, because the only fighter station to have remained in continuous operation since the Battle of Britain is about to close. It may not have a future, but it certainly has a past. Douglas Bader was just one of the many legendary pilots who have flown from here. And now, young men from a very different generation are preparing for their final takeoff. This is going to take 30 seconds. Yeah. Right, no, that'll, that'll be there. Yeah, I'm done. All right, let's go with that then. Okay, I'll... There is something about flying and about operating these aircraft. I still get a huge buzz from it. I wouldn't wish for any other job right now. This is the best job in the world. Wing Commander Dick McCormack is the officer in charge of 41 Squadron. Motto, seek and destroy. It's one of only two squadrons now left at Coltishall. I joined as a junior pilot two years ago. It is something I've wanted to do all of my life, really. It was about five years old. I was just out of a pushchair, I think. And we were at um, an air show in the southwest, down in Cornwall somewhere. And I saw um, a load of aeroplanes fly past. And I said to Dad, you know, that, I want to do that. I want to do that. Flight Lieutenant Andy King is the squadron's youngest pilot. He and the man they call the boss are preparing for an air combat sortie. Their aging Jaguars will be up against the world's newest warplane, the Typhoon. So you'll probably get Fox for next month, Air combat training is essentially dogfighting. We don't expect to win at all this afternoon. It's 30-year-old aircraft versus a brand new one, so yeah, so it should be interesting. There is pride at stake, and especially um, I've got friends up on Typhoon and they might be in the other jet, I, I don't know. So uh, there is, and um, the Jags are obviously an old aircraft now. And uh, if we could perhaps shoot down a, a brand new Typhoon, that would be great. But uh, I don't think it's going to happen. So. There we go. Aerodrome at Scotto. Air Ministry notice, site be cleared. It's understood that the Air Ministry has decided to construct an aerodrome. That's Scotto. Well, I never. Mick Jennings is the station historian. He has served at Coltishall for nine years. I mean, you look at Wembley Stadium today and wonder how on earth, you know, we managed to build a whole airfield in, in a year. Um, it, it was just incredible. Even uh, whilst construction was underway, aircraft started to operate from Coltishall. You could virtually name every single fighter ace in World War II that has served at Coldishaw. Douglas Bader, Johnny Johnson, the highest scoring Allied fighter pilot in World War II. Raymond Baxter, who went on to become a famous BBC commentator. Bob Stanford Tuck. The list goes on and on and on. It's just incredible to think of all these heroes, and, and that is using heroes in the correct context, not in the context that people tend to use it very loosely today. They were there and they flew from Coldishaw. Morning, gentlemen and lady. Yeah. Right, going down the board then from uh, last night. Fox Bravo serviceable. Fox Echo, hopefully going for the air test off the double engine change. Well, what this meeting's all about is um, to see whether we can meet the flying program that which the pilots had produced the uh, the previous day. Today, the majority of our jets are serviceable and good to go. Echo Juliet. Yeah, after uh, readjusting the air brake pot, they uh, did the pitch in your funks again, but it's still failing. 
so it's uh, further invest this morning. Sometimes the jets land in a pretty sorry state, but um, it's all hands to the pump to see if we can meet a flying programme. And that's the, what we call the battle with them throughout the day. The next two weeks is very much tinged with sadness as we, uh, as we draw towards the end. Not only are we trying to meet a busy, busy flying programme, we've got parade practices almost every day over the next two weeks. Let's go for the big one then. General Salute, present arms. In one of the hangars, the temperature is already rising with the arrival of instructors from the RAF regiment. Spot on. Switch on at the end there. We can get them up to standard, it's just a matter of shouting at them until they sort of uh, decide that they'll do what that needs to be done. Quick! March! Left, right, left! The final parades are only a fortnight away. The squadron's motto may be seek and destroy, but the instructors have their own slogan. Drill them till they drop. Right! Halt! There's some people slow on this side. It'll be an April Fool's Day, then I can say definitely that it will be uh, the finest parade that Colt Shaw has ever seen. Stand! Easy! OK, relax, take your hats off, get some air to your heads. This suit's really uncomfortable. It makes you very, very hot. It's a bit like dressing up as a scuba diver to go flying an aeroplane. So if we eject into the sea without this suit, then... Um, We've only got a few minutes, really, to get picked up. Well, I couldn't possibly admit to liking to get into an emergency. That would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> These are um, G trousers. Obviously, as you pull G force, the blood runs from your head to your feet, um, and this gives us something to push against, so we can keep our blood pressure quite high and keep the blood uh, in our heads rather than pooling in our feet. Vital piece of kit, really. Yes, we all enjoy flying the airplanes. I think it's, it's common to. Uh, most aviators really, it's something that it's in the blood, it's something we live for. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. Thank you. The Jaguar, it's an old aircraft, it has no autopilot, no fly by wire, nothing um, that modern jets have really. It's a, it's a demanding aircraft to fly, which means that a lot of your concentration, if you like, is, is put into actually flying the aircraft rather than looking out the window and trying to uh, put together a picture of, of what's happening in, in, in the airspace. It's a 30-year-old single-seat aeroplane, which still scares me to death every time I, I get in it. with the aircraft, with, with the pilots. It certainly is a, a, a fun relationship. Um, when they taxi past, we normally wave to the aircraft. Um, 
we, we, we get a wave back. It's, it's a camaraderie wave. I, I think what it goes back to was, was from the Battle of Britain. Um, when the boys used to taxi back out, some of them might not come back, so it was a all the best wave. While you're waiting there, you're thinking, oh, what am I doing here? Why did I ever join up? Once you start your engines, you've got that much to do, you haven't got time to think about it. Your best means of defence was aggression, attack. You'd never think of an individual anyway, it was an aircraft. You know. If you hit an aircraft, you, you were knocking an aircraft out of the sky, you weren't kind of killing somebody. Not a very happy sight with an aircraft, you know, blown up in the sky. And you think, oh, poor buggers, really being clobbered, but you can never relate that the same thing could happen to you. Tom O'Reilly flew Spitfires and Hurricanes into battle from Coltishaw. His closest friend died as they attacked German V-2 rocket sites in Holland. John Manley had been married for just two weeks. Tom was his best man. Jerry got very crafty and he used to put a curtain of flak up from 2,500 up to about five, 6,000 feet. So it was a solid kind of wall of flak. Uh, I, I was forced, and I got a couple of shells through the wing, but didn't stop me from flying, nothing in my engine. But John got hit in the engine, and uh, he had a shell at the back of his fuse and I was at. So John got well and truly really clobbered. He tried to climb, but unfortunately, I think, managed to get up to about 4,000 feet. And he tried to bail out, but he couldn't get out, you know. He spun down and went into an inverted spin and went into the North Sea, so he, he went straight down. So we're going left about onto south and then uh, we'll track down the coast towards uh, not Yarmouth and then turn in. Dick McCormack and Andy King, rehearsing for a very different kind of conflict, are returning to Coltishaw. Their dogfight with the typhoons ended, as expected, in swift defeat. They're turning in in two minutes, Daddy. McCormack fought in the first Gulf War. I think the real thing will always be something that is a step beyond, if you like. You think, gosh, this, this, is, this is real, this is real, and I am going to get shot at. Level 5, fifth land circuit clear. These sorties were about an hour, ten or so in duration. I recall them as being five minutes of abject worry as you went through anti-aircraft artillery and, and back up again, and heart and mouth worry, and then 30 or 40 minutes of transit home where you have time to relax. So there was a, an emotional curve, if you like, throughout the sortie. This is called Coltishall uh, End of the Line. It's the end of an era at Coltishall where the, this is the flight line at Coltishall looking over towards the 41 squadron and it's just a typical day on the flight line with ground crew working on the airplanes, pilots doing their walk round inspections, you know, they're all just going about their business. Like Dick McCormack, Mike Rondo was with 41 squadron at Coltishall. They flew together in the Gulf War. Today the former fighter pilot is one of Britain's top aviation artists. It does take me back. I mean, I remember going in that door there into the 41 Squadron Flight Office um, for years and years, and I spent 12 years going into that door. You know, it's not exactly a ghost town yet. There aren't tumbleweeds blowing across the, the concrete, but it's an eerie... It, it would be an eerie feeling to see it completely empty. Fourteen years after leaving the RAF, Mike Rondo is back at Coltishaw and reunited with his old aircraft, X-Ray Zulu 375. Scrapped two years ago, it's been saved and restored. I had unshakable faith that I would come home unscathed. I never had any doubt. You can't make mistakes, but those who did came back pretty white-faced, absolutely, you know, frightened themselves silly. But you make a mistake when people are shooting at you with real bullets, then it certainly focuses the mind. We had access to the same media that people uh, around the world had. So during the period 
when there was a lot of media coverage about the mistreatment of prisoners, then that certainly focused on my mind about uh, how determined or how, um, I don't want to use the term bloodthirsty, but we certainly became you know, quite keen to do the, do, the, do the missions properly and get the bombs on target. Every time the airplane came back from a mission where it dropped bombs, the ground crew would paint a little bomb symbol on it. The first one it dropped 4,000 pound bombs and so it went on. These are cluster bombs times two and uh, this is uh, rocket pods. So it was just a, a very old a wartime tradition. Crash 2, Coddershaw Tower, Roger, Emergency State 2. Emergency State 2, Jaguar 41 Squadron, RT failure, 20 miles, 2 PO points to remember. A Jaguar from 41 Squadron has suffered a complete communications failure and is returning to base fast. But what we're going to do is, is man up for an emergency state which is just to get the, the, the fire trucks and the medical personnel all ready so, God forbid anything happens, they're there and they can react within seconds. Emergency state to Jaguar 41 Squadron, RT failure. Emergency crash, standing by. I've done a colour shutout, be advised. Emergency aircraft, eight miles final. Tower. Commander Coleshaw Tower, be advised. Emergency aircraft now, five miles final still at. Crash crews to follow him back, yeah. Past the uh, slip now. Let's, let's stay where they are. Okay. Good Commander Coleshaw Tower, if you can hold your position and uh, follow the aircraft back in. Two is now terminated. Safe End of broadcast. The parade will form two ranks. Form two ranks. A nice straight line between the two ends now. It's only four days to the final parades. The drill instructors are doing what comes naturally, putting people in their place. Sure, Max, sir. I see you move that rifle across. This is your last manner again. Then I'll do extra drill with you at five o'clock until seven tonight. Happy? The instructors are now becoming a little impatient. Uh, sir, we might have a small problem. Uh, can you do me a favour? Because can you just shout at six and forty-one? Because I'm getting pissed off with them. Right, listen in. And then we'll stand still. Left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, 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 underestimate what Coltershaw means. Now is the time, if you like, to shed a few tears, and I'll be perfectly honest about that. I suppose, with our head in the sand, we all hope that the Jaguars have gone away on detachment, as they have for years, and they're going to come back. But sadly, it's not going to be the case. <laughs> When I walk down onto the aircraft pans and you think, yeah, it, it is the end of an era. Uh, I personally start to think about the Spitfires and the Hurricanes and the Mosquitoes and the Bowfighters because I'm fascinated with that era. And I can, in the quiet, when there's nobody around, I can actually see these guys running out from the hangars, climbing into their aircraft and going off. So 
yeah, it, it, it is very, very hard. Everybody wants to be a fighter pilot. Uh, crazy, I don't know. Like, uh, I suppose it's like playing the Premier League, isn't it? That was a glamour job. Well, answer. They don't want to forget, you know. God, I suppose. I've come across it in this younger generation. A few people have said, oh, it's all finished with now. That's, that's history, you know, forget it, kind of thing. We don't want to forget it. Well, I don't want to forget it. I did 83 sources altogether. Yeah. So, 83 times I got away with it. Yes, Lucky Riley. <laughs> I was the one who would club it three times. I'd gone down three times and survived three crash landings, you know. So I was, I was a lucky one. Johnny Walsh, he went for a burn. Who else? Albert Green, he went for a burn. Quite a few, oh, George Meyer, he went for about maybe eight or ten of them. Uh, I can mention that. They were a great lot of chaps. Well, we all owe them a terrific debt of gratitude anyway. Brings back memories, you know, of so many, I don't know, difficult times. Joan Osborne Walker was 19 when she arrived at Coltishall. In the tiny cemetery at the end of the runway, young men she knew and enemies she did not are buried side by side. It was shocking to begin with. It's dreadful to think these young men were just going out and getting killed like that. But um, you just had to get on with things. To be honest, our generation was brought up not to show emotion. It was considered a bad form, so we were taught to keep our feelings to ourselves. There would be a, a jolly crowd at the table for breakfast in the morning and the dining rooms, and then later on in the day there'd be empty spaces. You know, some of them just didn't come back. On the land or in the air Or on the deep blue sea I don't care no matter where You're everything to me We didn't know what the future was going to bring. And it was really only through uh, Churchill speeches that kept us going. I mean, we really did spur us on. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. All our hearts go out to the fighter pilots whose brilliant actions we see with our own eyes. Every wireless set, as they were called then, everybody crowded around them and listened. I mean, an absolute silence to every word he said. It really inspired everybody. I grew up very quickly. We all did. We all did. We were all very naive when we arrived, but we soon grew up. I was a different person when I left there nearly three years later, I can tell you. Andy King won't be marching in the final parades. He'll be keeping step in a different formation, a fly-past by nine Jaguars. It's a difficult and potentially dangerous manoeuvre. Because Cold Shore's closing, then uh, we want to you know, put on a good show on the day. So uh, what I'm getting together here is a handy little war book, we call them, which is just a document we take into the jet. And this is perhaps the most important one, the breakout manoeuvre. If something's wrong with the aircraft, i.e. something that's really going to affect you, then you've really got to keep your cool and remember that there are eight other aircraft around you. For example, if we're in a right-hand turn and number three had an engine failure, if he just pulled away, there's a chance he could take out six, one and two. So you could potentially kill the guys in these aircraft. One slight um, emergency in one jet could lead to five catastrophic emergencies in, in the rest. After today, Dick McCormack, the boss of 41 Squadron, will swap flying for a desk job at the Ministry of Defence in Whitehall. This is Emergency Day. It's a culmination of 66 years of, of history stretching back to just before the Battle of Britain and there has been continuous operational flying at Coldshaw ever since. It is a very odd feeling to be leaving this environment and going into something new. Um, I have been told by 
the Air Officer Commanding One Group that um, if I don't want to give it up, now is possibly a good time to leave. I haven't yet bought that idea, but uh, maybe he's right. You are doing three fly paths here at Norwich and Coningsby. All has been approved. Andy King is, I think, one of our brightest prospects, and I think he will do stunningly well in the future. People like him, the young people, will go on and will fly, maybe in other bases, maybe in other aircraft, but they will take with them a piece of cultural, they will take with them a piece of history. So uh, cultural may be gone, but uh, its capability is, is long from finished. Sixty-six years after those first Spitfires, the parade marks the end of flying at RAF Coltishall. Today, the only flying so far is on the ground. Hats are taking off in the high winds. Handing over the standard of 41 Squadron to its new home at RAF Coningsby is the final act. Hand over the Squadron standard! I'm sure there are many of us that will have a lump in our throats. And uh, I certainly will when we, when we hand over the standard of 41 Squadron and we walk away from it as a bunch of individuals. I hand into your safety big the standard of number 41 Fight the squadron. I charge you to guard and honor it. I will do so! Present! Stop! For Dick McCormack, the Diamond 9 flypast is a poignant reminder that his days as a fast jet pilot are all but over. I feel pretty upset. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit in a word, really. Um, I prefer not to have done that, but you know, these things happen, so it moves on. The, the good thing is that the squadron is not going to disband and disappear entirely, so it is going to carry on and move on in another form, so I'm happy about that. Uh, but I don't think any squadron commander watch marches off a parade square after handing over his standard that feels particularly good about it. So, yeah, I've had better days. Right, I'm going to have that now. That's my squadron pennant. Uh, this is the commanding officer's pennant. And I'm not the commanding officer anymore, but it's mine, so I'm going to take it. Coltishall has been home to 74 squadrons since the Battle of Britain. But this is the end. It's over and out. Forever. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many, to so few.